So we're going to have a traditional Christ-centered time of reading through the narrative of Christ, singing the Christmas carols that are actually about Jesus, not Rudolph, <laughs> not winter time and not frosty, not any of those, only the ones that are about Jesus. And normally if you and I were sitting down kind of one-on-one, I'd kind of ask you how your day was. Um, honestly, I'll admit my day was a little off. My wife's like, yes, it was. <laughs> It was rough, and it just—it was all surrounding this time tonight. And yet, truth is, I really don't care how your day was. <laughs> and this is what I mean by that. If you had an awful, horrible day, that has nothing to do with what we're about to do now. If you had the best day of your life, awesome, it's just going to get better. But the reality is, is whatever your day was, good or bad, indifferent, uneventful, whatever, what we're going to do right now is going to be a great time together. And so let's pray, ask God's blessing on it, and let's leave the day, the week, maybe even your year behind, and let's enjoy tonight together. Amen? Amen. 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 Why don't you stand with me and we'll pray and begin together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace towards us, Lord, that is fully embodied in Christ our Savior. Lord, God the Son, who took on human flesh, Lord, to redeem us from the curse of the law, from sin and death, to give us forgiveness of sins and eternal life. I pray, Lord, that we would get to celebrate that great and noble truth, Lord, that is true for all people at all times. And so, Lord, I pray that we would have a time tonight where we worship you in all your glory and honor for what you have given us in Jesus. And in your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. be reading from the gospel of Luke tonight, chapter two. And I just want to encourage you tonight is not a performance. It's not about how great our band sounds, but it's really just facilitate facilitating a time for all of us to really worship. This is about the Lord. This is about him and what he's given us. So pay attention to those words you're singing tonight. They were picked for a reason and they have that truth that we need during this time of Christmas. Luke two, verse one In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, 
because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. Come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourn lonely exile here until the Son of God appears. Rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Sing with us. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive. Rael, that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appears. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn.
this same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Angels, we have heard on high, sweetly sing. from them to heaven. The shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child.
And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds had told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. So at this moment, I take the liberty every year to talk for a few minutes about Christmas and specifically Christ. It's kind of when you take your car to the mechanic and you keep telling them it's pulling to the right. I want to go in this direction, but I keep going that way. You got to get your tires aligned. You got to make sure you can go straight. And this is a time to kind of get realigned in regards to Christmas, because if you're like me, you already got swept up into all of it. All the shopping, all the different obligations you have during this time, the parties you got to go to, and everything else that Christmas can quickly devolve into. But I want to ask you this question, have you reflect on it. What is the most beloved Christmas movie ever? Now, on that list, it's definitely going to be like, It's a Wonderful Life, right? Miracle on 34th Street. All right, what about, um, what do I have here? Elf, that's a new classic. I'm ashamed I didn't even put that on the list. Polar Express, family favorite. Home Alone, Home Alone. Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Thank you. But you know what's interesting about all the Christmas movies we just mentioned? They don't even say the name of Jesus in them, I don't think. And if they do, it's a cuss word. <laughs> Might be die hard. 
Um, but the reality is, is you look at, if you go to Netflix or Hulu, if that's what you stream on these days, they have a holiday section. You look at all the Christmas movies. 99% really have nothing to do with Jesus. Isn't that sad? Is it any wonder that you and I lose sight of really what Christmas is all about? And yet Home Alone highlights for us how easy it is to forget what is most important. Like your own child <laughs> on a family vacation. Or your glasses on your head. Don't laugh like you haven't done it. Where are my glasses? And they're right here, right? Or why you walked into the kitchen. Or remembering why you walked into the garage. It's easy to forget the reason why we do things. And I think that's the human condition. If you read through the scriptures and God's story of redemption, God's people are always forgetting something. And oftentimes we forget the reason for what we do. We forget the reason why we're even married. I'm be honest. You just start cohabitating and you forget why you got married. The purpose in your marriage. You're like, wait, there's a purpose? Absolutely. A God-given purpose to your relationship and marriage. What's your reason for having kids? You're like, I have no idea. <laughs> you have a reason for raising your children to know Christ. There's all these God-given reasons we forget. What's your reason for working? If you say money, then no wonder you don't enjoy your job. That should not be the primary reason. Isn't that a novel idea? You mean God has a greater purpose for your work? Absolutely he does. It's more than just giving you food on the table or a roof over your head. It's to glorify him through your gifts and talents and to show the glory of Christ in everything you and I do. Brings new meaning to your work. But we forget our reason for even being here. And the same is true of Christmas. We forget the reason for Christmas. Jesus is the forgotten reason of Christmas. Every year it's the same thing. We focus on all the things that Christmas is not about. And this was highlighted for me two years ago when Christmas fell on a Sunday morning. You remember that? And the big debate in churches all over the United States is should we have a Christmas service? Many did not. Well, because, you know, the families, they're going to be doing presents and you don't want to inconvenience them or make them feel guilty for, come, you know, for not going to church. You're like, wait, isn't the whole purpose of Christmas, Christmas? <laughs> it's another holiday. The whole purpose of Christmas is the birth of Jesus, God's only son. That it's not a religious idea that just makes us feel warm and fuzzy. That you can have all these nostalgic traditions that we create around it. But it's a real historical event. That there is historical evidence. There's sociological evidence throughout human history. For why Jesus really did in fact live, die, and raise again from the dead, and is alive as we speak. If all that be true, who cares about the presence under the tree? What you can or cannot buy your loved ones. And I asked my kids in the car, I said, hey guys, do you think we could have a good Christmas with no presents? <laughs> now we got five at home, and I got five dirty looks. <laughs> they're like, dad, you're up to something. Like, and they're all, well, there's, there's presents already under the tree. I'm like, yeah, okay, there is. Mom, mom got motivated, right? But that's a question I pose to you. Could you have your best Christmas yet without a single present under the tree? You know, Jen and I, when we lived in Virginia, this was 13 years ago, uh, in the D.C. area, there was one Christmas we had no presents under the tree. We just couldn't afford to buy anything for each other. And yet that Christmas, we got Joey. He was our foster son at the time, and he was a whopping 11 weeks old. And since we had no presents under the tree, I stuck his little butt in a stocking <laughs> and took a picture. And he was our gift that year. 
And it was arguably probably the best Christmas we've had because it was about a child who was given. Is that not what Christmas should be? See, Jesus came. It says in, where's it? First John 3, 8. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. Did you know Jesus came on a mission to destroy the forces of evil and darkness? That little baby meant business. Yeah, take him out. And that's what he did. Destroy the works of the devil. Well, what are the works of the devil that he came to destroy? Well, sin. Sin's effect on you and me that brought death and division and family strife. And so it's interesting that at Christmas time, when our families are supposed to come together, Satan comes in and he brings wedges to drive us apart, does he not? It's right in line with his battle plan. Yet Jesus came to destroy all of that, to bring peace between God and man, to bring unity between humanity and one another, so that we can have good, lasting relationships founded on truth and righteousness and not the things that don't matter. See, Jesus came for many reasons. But I want to ask you tonight, what is your reason for Christmas? It said Jesus is the reason for the season. It's so cliche, I don't even want to say it. But... That's too limiting. Jesus is not just the reason for this season. He is the reason for Christmas. He's the reason for life. He's the reason for everything. And some of you came here tonight forgetting the reason for your living. Forgetting the reason God placed you on this earth. And that is to know Him. To not be at odds with Him. To not be divided or separated from Him. But to be welcomed into his family. And just as Joey was brought into our family on Christmas, you and I can be brought into the family of God on Christmas. We have that opportunity and it is through believing in the Son and receiving the gift that He offers to you and me. Jesus is the reason for everything. But what is God's reason for Christmas? There's a song that goes like this. And we are the reason that He gave His life. We are the reason that He suffered and died. To a world that was lost, He gave all He could give to show us the reason to live. I finally found the reason for living. It's in giving every part of my heart to Him. In all that I do, in every word that I say, I'll be giving my all just for Him. And we are the reason that He gave His life. You see, if you leave here tonight not understanding and not knowing how much God loves you, that He gave His only Son for you so you could be His and to know Him and have eternal life, then you're missing it. You're missing the whole reason, not just for Christmas, but for everything. For your whole life. Why God has placed you here. And so don't be like all the Christmas movies that have nothing to do with Jesus. Let your life have everything to do with Him. That's why God created you. That you might know Him and walk with Him. And we're going to take a moment. And another cliche saying, I guess I'm bringing them all out tonight, is it's better to give than receive. And at Christmas time, we've received the greatest gift any human being has ever received, and that is Christ. If you have believed on Him for salvation, as the greatest gift you will ever receive, it is eternal life that comes to live within your very soul. I love the song we sang that says, when He appeared, the soul felt its worth. Without Jesus, your soul does not know its worth, does not know its value. But because of Him, you can know the immeasurable value of your soul to the Lord. But the thing is, is it's better to give than receive. And so in light of that, you have an opportunity to give something to Jesus tonight. This is, as we do every year, it's a birthday celebration. It is the birth of Christ. And if you're a skeptic and you're like, well, Jesus wasn't really born on December 25th, get over it. 
seriously. We don't know exactly what day. That's not the point. The point is it's the day the church historically has chosen to worship Jesus. Is there anything wrong with that? No. Every day of the year has been used for pagan purposes. Let's take one of them and redeem it for holy purposes, right? And so we are going to have an opportunity. There's a big present out there with the hole in the top that my wife wonderfully wrapped. It's a happy birthday wrapping, not Christmas. And there's slips of paper. And we've done this the last two years. We'll do it again this year. If you have something you want to give to Jesus this year, write it on that piece of paper, fold it up, and drop it in. Okay? That might be your heart, your life. You want to give everything to Him. Write it down. If it's your fears, maybe you are plagued by fear and anxiety. Jesus said, cast all your cares upon me for I care for you. Give those to Jesus. Your future, whatever it is you're holding on to that you would like to give to him, write it down. But before you do that, that'll be after we close. You, can, you have time to do that. We're going to eat birthday cake too. All right? Okay. But before we do that, we're doing something different this year. Because of Norco fire code, we can't do it in here. We're going to go outside, and these doors are going to open here, and they're going to open in the back, and you're going to come out to the courtyard. Make sure you get a candle. We are going to use real fire, so be careful, especially if you're by somebody with big, lots of product in their hair. <laughs> Don't look at them. Don't point anybody out. But please be careful. And we're going to come out there, and we're going to sing. But I'm going to light my candle up here, and I'm going to bring it outside, because that is symbolic of the light of Christ. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will no longer walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And the purpose of the good news of Jesus is that it may be here in this church building, but we are to go out there into the darkness to bring the light of Christ to those who are lost in darkness, and who are weary and need new life. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to light a candle out there, and then all of you are going to light each other's candles while we sing to the Lord. And then we'll sing happy birthday. And when we sing happy birthday to Jesus at the end, then we blow out the candles. Right? You see what we're doing there? Can't take credit. Jen's idea. That's what we're doing. And then please drop the candles in water buckets out there. But in a spirit of worship, we're going to continue to do that. If I can have the gentleman open the doors, please just make your way out there safely. Father, I pray for all those who are here tonight, Lord, a blessing on them this Christmas time. I pray, Lord, for those who may not have faith in you yet, Lord, grant to them faith and repentance this evening, that new life, Lord, would be born in them by your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the gift of Christ, and Lord, we worship you and praise you this evening.
of our life or all of our life this evening. We pray, Lord, that you would be with our families this Christmas time. May we not forget the reason, Lord, for Christmas, for life, for living, for everything, that it's you, Lord. It's you and all that you've given us. And so we pray, Lord, that we walk in newness of life and faith. May we worship you this Christmas and not forget you at all. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.